I was very interested in tuberculosis from a scientific standpoint because I think it's, it's a challenging subject on which to work. Um, the, the, the pathogen is slow growing and it has, has a number of very unusual properties. I also had personal reasons for working on TB because my mother had tuberculosis around about the same time as uh, Jacques Rosset did at, at the end of the Second World War. Um, and I, my mother is now deaf as a result probably of uh, the streptomycin treatment that she had at that time. And so one of the things that my lab is involved in doing is trying to find better drugs than streptomycin so that we can come up with a more modern and more efficient therapy. TB is obviously a poverty-related disease um, and uh, there is far too much poverty in the world. I think if, if we really want to make a big impact on TB, we should do something about eradicating poverty first. Um, and obviously that's, a, that's a, a problem which is beyond my skills I think it, the politicians should be trying to do that. Um, I think something that's particularly interesting that needs to be brought to the attention of the, the public uh, is that the, the, there is this perception that having TB is something wrong or sinful, that one's done something dreadful to get this disease. And that, you know, that's, that's really nonsense. Um, everybody who breathes is at risk of getting tuberculosis so um, really people shouldn't feel that there's any shame associated with it. There's no more shame associated with TB than there is with any other disease and I think that it's, it's really important that people realize that and that we destigmatize tuberculosis because one of the reasons that the funding is so poor for, for the disease generally is because people feel ashamed to talk about it and to engage with tuberculosis a, a, as a problem. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is a particularly difficult organism to, 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 to tackle with drugs because they, the compounds don't seem to get into the bacterium or if they do they're inactivated or, or spat out again very rapidly and so finding uh, it's been a lot more difficult than every, everyone thought to find compounds which which show activity against uh, whole bacteria um, and also I think we've been doing things the wrong way um, people we've been using chemical libraries which have compounds with unsuitable properties maybe we need to look at a bit more uh, different sources, explore different, you know, vaster, broader chemical space. For instance, if you, if you look at the compounds, the drugs which are in the clinic, mo many of them, if not the vast majority, are, are natural products, antibiotics made uh, by bacteria or, or fungi. And in the past 20 years or so, these have fallen out of favor in the pharmaceutical industry for, for different reasons. Um, yet uh, they remain the, the most important uh, source of clinical drugs. So perhaps one approach which could be followed would be to look at new uh, sources of natural products, maybe some of the marine bacteria or bacteria that live in peat bogs and to see whether they produce any um, natural products which might kill mycobacterium tuberculosis. And if you remember Mycobacterium tuberculosis arose from, from somewhere in, in the environment, probably in a, in a pond or something like that. So maybe if we use an ecological approach and look to see if there are um, antibiotic producing organisms that live in the same niche as the ancestor of Mycobacterium tuberculosis, maybe that will be a successful way to, to move forward. First of all, we're talking about drug discovery and then we're talking about drug development. So the first part is mainly funded by government agencies, the European Commission, uh, science foundations and so on, who are interested in, in uh, basic science. Um, in my opinion, there's not enough 
while there is a reasonable b amount of funding going into basic science on tuberculosis, there's not enough being focused on drug discovery. And if you don't put enough money in there, then you won't have anything to develop downstream. So the, so the downstream part is, is well covered by people like the Global Alliance and like some of the biotechs and farmers. But in order for them to have a product to develop, you have to invest in a discovery phase of, uh, of the, uh, make sure that that is, is um, on sound and solid foundations in order for the products to come down to, to reach development. For every compound in reach, you know, that gets into the clinic, 10 have failed previously. So we need to build a pipeline where um, there are sufficient compounds coming through to ensure that at least one will, will, will reach the clinic. I think we certainly need good advocates in order to raise the level of public awareness and to, to, to bring this problem to the attention of the, the leading politicians and the deciders. Um, I, I feel that uh, very strongly that there's not enough advocacy on the part of TB. We've seen how successful that was for the development of um, interventions, treatments for, for HIV. Uh, it played a, a tremendous role. The engagement of, the, of the, the patients themselves was extremely important. We, we certainly need to do something uh, similar for TB in order to address some of these basic issues like the lack of funding for critical steps in the, in the, the drug uh, discovery, drug development pipeline. First of all, the public can help by, trying, by becoming interested in the problem, realizing that this is something which affects thousands, millions of ordinary people through no fault of their own. Um, they can help by lobbying their politicians, telling their local senator or member of parliament that they think this is an important issue, that is, even if it's not necessarily a problem which affects your country, it's something which affects the world. While, there's, while there are huge epidemics and massive poverty in certain parts of the world, there will always be social inequality, and this is a source of um, political instability which can lead to tremendous knock-on effects. You know, civil wars, regional wars and so on. Um, and addressing basic issues of healthcare is one way of, of preventing that kind of thing from happening.